on the screen August 30th, 1994. I'm here at the uh, laboratories of Robert K. Goker in Brockton, Massachusetts, uh, follower of uh, Tesla. Follower out of what, uh, what country was he out of? Uh, Yugoslavia, right? Mm -hmm. The old Yugoslavia. We're accompanied by assistant this evening, David. David, your last name is? Shilm. Shilm, David Shilm. Okay, nice to see you this evening. This is uh, quite an experiment. Bob, talk to us a little bit about this as you're going along. What are you doing now? I'm um, uh, getting ready to bring the two, two electrodes together and make uh, multiple fireballs. Multiple fireballs, that'll look known as? Ball lightning. Ball lightning, okay. And, uh, close the switch, as you saw. Put the fan on and blow the smoke that way. Okay. This is probably five to 6,000 amps you're going to see. Okay. I'm going to give a first shot right now. Notice okay, now, you have to start up. Okay, now. It's in the battery, right over here. Wait a minute, I'll hold it. Yeah. All right, fire away. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you're rigging additional light for us, Bob, because I, I'm afraid the camera is not focusing fast enough. Um, the um, sudden brightness yeah. is causing the camera to go out of focus. Let's try it with a little additional light. I think we'll do better. Wait a minute now. Go. Okay, we're getting them as they fade, Bob. But it's still not getting the focus immediately. Give it another shot. Okay, hold it. You can do bigger. Okay, now hold, hold up here now, Bob. Talk to me just a minute on your earlier experience, uh, experiments. Did you uh, uh, create these over water as you are now? Were they, were, did you get multiple bursts like this when you started, or one single ball of ball lightning? With the uh, other machine across the street, which is a transformer, which was only 2,500 amps, we got usually one or two balls of one blast, and it was usually a quarter inch in the water. Okay. This here, it makes so many of them, some go, can start out on the water, some will start above the water. The water kind of catches them, keeps them floating around so they're in two dimension instead of going in all directions, so you can kind of watch them. Okay, now uh, the, the earlier ones, uh, uh, longevity, what were you getting for duration? Oh, three, two, two three seconds, okay. once in a while, five seconds. Now we get nine, ten seconds, once in a while, twelve seconds. I love it. So they're getting longer in time. Next thing I'm going to work on make them bigger with more amperage. What do you estimate of, bus bars. What do you estimate of your best diameters here? Well, we've got residuals that you can look at now at about uh, an eighth of an inch left over after the thing goes out. And you can see there's a pure metal inside with a crust around it. It's kind of interesting. I've, I've got a microscope set up here that I can study the formation and uh, what they look like. Of course, the bigger you make them, the easier they are to study. The first ones I'm making were, the remnants were about the size of a grain of sugar. So it's kind of hard to put electrodes through them and study them. You have to look, and look at them with a 60 power microscope. Huh. Let me okay. Give you a few more shots here. Yeah? Very good. Hold up, let me get set. Hey, I'm shooting. Go ahead. Oh. Excellent. 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 Okay, now what's coming up, Bob? What are you going to be doing from here? Well, I just got a truckload of uh, acid to fill eight more batteries. What do you using? What do you use for batteries? Tell us here now. These are nuclear submarine batteries. Uh -huh. We're used in our first all our nuclear boats, and they're just excess in the government uh, warehouses and. Capacity of these batteries, what are they? They're about 25,000 amp hours. Mm -hmm. Your automobile battery is maybe two to 400 amp hours. They're big. And uh, these have a lot of punch to them. And what do you got in now? A series of how many? I've got 20 batteries in series, which is uh, 200, about uh, 42 volts at somewhere between five and 8,000 amps. Wow. I haven't got around to measuring the amps yet. But and what are, you gonna add, what are you gonna add on to this? Another eight batteries. Another eight batteries. Uh, that'll make it uh, 28 batteries. And Roughly about uh, 56 volts. You think it'll affect the duration of the ball lightning? Oh yeah, it's going to be a lot louder and more power here. There'll be a lot more activity too. Excellent. 
and I'm also going to add more bus bars. Instead of single uh, bus bars, there'll be three or four of them all in parallel. And I'm going to add some inductance too to simulate the conditions of a submarine when these things form. Ball lightning had been seen in submarines during World War II when they were maneuvering or making mistakes in the maneuvering process. So ball lightning is uh, still a mystery. Uh Okay, Bob, uh, you're standing by these uh, submarine-type batteries now. Talk to us a little about these. Uh, weight, size? Well, these batteries uh, were used in nuclear submarines, or at least have never been used, but they're the type that are used in nuclear submarines. They weigh 900 pounds empty and with electrolyte acid in it, they weigh uh, 1,050 pounds. They uh, are 5 feet high and they're 25,000 amp hour batteries and in submarines they connect approximately 300 of these up in series, and this is what drags the, propul the propulsion system of the submarine in case the nuclear pile or nuclear reactor fails and goes down. They, they have to have a way to get up in the bottom of the ocean, so that's why they always still have uh, batteries on any submarine that's used in this world today. Uh, these batteries I modified and adapted for use in high current testing, and uh, I'm going to be adding more batteries to these to this battery bank. Submarines uh, in the world, in the World War II and even World War I uh, at times have observed, submarines have observed ball lightning coming off the uh, maneuvering switch gear and going into the engine room and uh, it kind of was a folklore in the Navy but uh, people who worked in submarines knew these things. They even, uh, many of the cooks were afraid of them and uh, it was kind of a scary thing. Nobody understood it and uh, even the chief electrician couldn't explain how this happened, he knew how to do it, but uh, it was something that the, the uh, master electrician never did too often. They never had any uh, reports of the animals in the uh, technical device. I have more batteries here that will be added to this bank. If you pan around, you'll see some of the bigger, more than make us, make us a bigger system and uh, we can make even bigger fireballs and bigger ball lightning. The boxes over there, Bob, contain? They're uh, five gallon, they're empty, but they're five gallon containers of uh, battery acid. I see. And the white uh, barrel thing is the thing I use to uh, pump the acid into the batteries and measure it out. All in all, we have 500 batteries here in all. And David takes a moment off. Okay, Bob, now we... Uh, We've got the background on this. We've seen the power and everything. We've seen the ball lightning. Uh, uh, where does this lead us? Well, it leads us to new sciences. I mean, it's, if you go back to 1831, when Faraday first was playing with capacitors and electricity, he didn't know where this would lead. He had no idea that we'd have digital watches and computers. But I mean, if people don't experiment with the unknown, we will not find new, new technology. I'm hoping that uh, this work will lead to better way of confining high temperature gases, maybe an application of nuclear fusion, which will make it practical to have nuclear energy, safe thermal nuclear fusion energy that doesn't pollute. Uh, the sky is wide open. Who knows what this will be? I mean, here we have a technique for confining high temperature in a very small ball-like effect, and uh, it lasts for seconds, and that's all we need for fusion. 